So I think this is a kind of good opportunity for us both to lay some important foundations that we feel like would be important before we go any deeper, especially for some of your audience that may be watching this. So I'll let you kind of start us off as far as like basic first principles. If someone doesn't really, they've never heard of this before at all. What, what few things do you feel like we should definitely make sure to, to cover before we start diving into things that aren't necessarily going to be followed by someone without a elementary knowledge? Yeah, this, this topic is so, um, it's such a huge topic with so many mind blowing implications that you do kind of have to lay the groundwork first before you get into it or you'll lose people. And I think let's like, let's go back to what we just said about how we all know something's wrong with the world we live in, but what is that? What is the thing that's wrong? Well, an enlightened civilization, for example, would be a civilization where no being has any rights or powers that any other being doesn't have you know, presidents, policemen, judges, nobody has any rights above anyone else in a truly enlightened civilization. So does that resemble the world we live in very much? Not (laughs) quite. (laughs) No, we live in a very opposite world, right? There's definitely hierarchies of power and rights. You know, we watch the FBI doing whatever they want these days, just right in your face, in the light, breaking every law and code that we have in our constitution saying, what are you going to do about it? You're not going to do anything about it because we own you, you know, So we're not even close to that kind of civilization yet. But what we have to know is that the law for mankind, common law, it's sometimes called natural law, it's also called, that is the law of an enlightened civilization, which is very, very simple, not confusing at all and not complicated at all. It's basically the law of all men are created equal, Mm -hmm. all, all our beings of the creator do no harm, you know, don't cause harm or injury to anyone, always tell the truth, don't deceive people, don't lie to people. Just be honest, be a good person and do no harm. And if you do harm on accident, you make remedy for it. That's it in common law. Mm -hmm. So how do we get from that to this fake, crazy legal world where there's like 30,000 laws you can break without even knowing it, where you're doing no harm to anyone and you're going to be thrown in jail and imprisoned and fined and stuff. Well, it's basically the story of how bankers took over the world. (laughs) As crazy as that sounds. And let's just stick with America, even though they've also done this in every other country, but Let's just look at American history because we're most familiar with that. When the founding fathers created America, it was because they were leaving the European system in, in Great Britain that was set up this way too. Totally corrupt, you know, taxation without representation was their complaint. And they were like, we got to go, we just got to leave the system here. We can't beat it. They've got us so, you know, pinned in, like, well, there's no way we can beat these guys. Let's leave and start a new country. So they left to the, the United States, to America founded this country, and they tried their best to set up our constitution and stuff in such a way that these banking elites could never do what they did here in England. And so they set up the constitution and they did a great job. They really did. They set up, you know, checks and balances, three different branches and all this stuff, uh, bill of rights. And they, they made, they made a couple of really important claims in the constitution that you would think would have prevented what has happened today from ever happening. One is there is no involuntary uh, servitude. No indentured servitude is allowed. Um, So you can't put someone into debt and make them your slave, basically. But that is exactly what has happened here. And what happened is when the founding fathers started this country, they, they made it into a corporation. So if you look at the Constitution, it says the United States of America, like in the first sentence, we the people of the United States of America. So that's the country, the actual physical place that exists, the land. And they only mention the United States of America twice in the Constitution, but they mention the United States like 20 something times, I think. All caps, that's, right? All caps, yeah. And that's because they made, they made a corporation out of the country immediately, uh, which is what the banking elites always do. Mm-hmm. So really what we're saying here is that everything in our, in our world today, from governments, police, courts, everything is business being disguised as governments, police, courthouses, and so forth. It's all businesses like McDonald's, like Burger King, like Dunkin' Mm -hmm. Donuts, pretending to be a government. Mm -hmm. So they made a corporation out of the United States, which may not be some Illuminati scheme, right? Maybe they had innocent intentions of like, oh, we just want to be able to do business as the United States with other countries. But nevertheless, they made a corporation. 
And that's where everything started to go south very quickly. Fast forward, you know, past the Civil War, the country went bankrupt. There's no more, no more money. In 1911, I think, was the meeting of Jekyll Island, where all these elite banking families, the Morgans, Rockefellers, Carnegies, Rothschilds, and so forth, they get together saying, how do we take this country over like we did in England, like our forefathers did in England? And the idea they came up with was, let's make another for-profit commercial business, and we'll just call it something federal sounding, and then we'll go into business with the for-profit corporation called the United States. And so they set up the Federal Reserve to print money and make that the bank of the United States corporation. So because it all sounds federal and legitimate, people mm -hmm. thought it was. Marketing. Exactly. It's just basically really good marketing on their behalf. Mr. United States government and Mr. Federal Reserve Bank do a you know backhanded deal where they say, hey, you uh, get into a bunch of debt for up, uh, to us and we'll just print you infinite money and then you can tax, you'll have a really good reason to tax all your citizens to pay back this infinite debt you'll never pay back. And then we'll have this perfect like monopoly board scheme going where we just make more fake money that's not backed by anything. We print it out of thin air and we give it to you to do whatever you want with it. And then you just pay us back by taxing your people. And we'll both make tons of money and be rich and wealthy and own the world. So the question is, how do they tax a man or a woman in the United States of America if we're not in a business contract with them? Because again, they're like McDonald's or something running a Ponzi scheme. I don't have a contract to pay McDonald's taxes. I'm not paying them anything. So this is where the really seductive, sneaky, insidious plot was created to basically own everyone from birth as a kind of debt slave. So I'm, I'm excited to pick your brain about this more, but um, when we get into the money conversation, but yeah. because we know there, there was no more money, they took it off the gold standard, they got rid of gold and stuff. There's no money in circulation anymore. It's all debt notes. Mm -hmm. so what actually has real value anymore? Well, it's people. Right. People have value because we, a man or a woman, have jobs, create things, take out loans, do business deals, buy things, on and on and on, build properties. So a person, a, a man or a woman, rather, not a person, a man or a woman has a people. Value. As weird as it sounds, it's a people. Yeah, the person is the, <laughs> the dirty term that they use to get yeah. you. But uh, so they what they do is they make just like they did with the United States of America, they make a fake corporation out of your name at birth. And whenever you see your name in all capital letters, that's the fake business they created out of your name. So mm -hmm. like literally the Federal Reserve has a Dun and Bradstreet number. They're a private for profit business and they print our money as a country. It's like so mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the United States is a business, not a government with a Dun & Bradstreet number, it's it's a trust, right? So, so they make a business out of your name and they trick your parents into signing it on the birth certificate because in the fine print, it's basically saying this whole estate is now property of the United States Corporation. And uh, from that point on, they basically just trick you into representing this legal fiction, all capital letters out of your name because, hey, you're none the wiser. You see your name on the paper, you think it's you and you say, yep, that's me and you sign away. Well. What they just tricked you into doing is entering a business contract with them because that's the only way they can get you into their fake monetary system. Because otherwise, you're a free, divine, sovereign being who has no obligations to anybody but God. So they have to deceive you into thinking you're that corporation. Mm -hmm. And then tying it back to the more spiritual and biblical frameworks that you were talking about in the beginning where you were explaining how common law only has a few tenants and that came from God's law. And how did we go from that to all of this? I think that that's a perfect summary that you just gave of it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> it's a very right. slow, gradual process. And the way that they do it is words. This is why when you get into law, the first one of the first principles you need to start with is what's called etymology. As you can see, I have multiple Black's Law dictionaries here. I have a dictionary of word origins, and I have a banker's dictionary, and then I have the Holy Bible. These are all commerce books. Yep. I'll say that again. <laughs> These are all commerce books. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible is how I learn commerce. So I love all the similarities, and this path of law, I always tell my students, it's 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 shadow work. Totally. It's It's so similar to shadow work. 
you, you meet aspects of yourself. You run into the, the illusion of, you know, like at certain levels of consciousness, when you get high enough up there, you reach oneness, right? Like I'm sure you teach all about that at a certain level. There isn't me and Aaron. There's just, I, the one, there's just essence, whatever you want to, whatever name you want to try to put on it. There's just one. The same thing happens when you start engaging in commerce or you start trying to battle these entities or fight the system. Guess who you're fighting? Yourself. You're, you're, that's shadow work. You can try to get mad at Biden. You can try to get mad at the system. You can try to fight the IRS. Like this is you. So what I have found is it, it's such a spiritual journey and a spiritual process of how do you relate to the aspects of yourself that are really ugly and you want to disown and act like they're not you, but they are. Because if we agree that all is one, then I created this, Right. you created this. And that's where I see a huge disconnect. When we started this uh, episode, you brought up how you appreciated my lens and you haven't seen this lens taken. And the reason I stepped into this role, though part of me wanted to play small and not put myself under the scrutiny, (laughs) I'm sure you can understand that. Most don't come forward with this stuff. The reason I chose to step into it is because I don't see really hardly anyone in this space teaching from an an experiential and embodied understanding Mm -hmm. that there's nothing out there that you're fighting. It's yeah, you and, and most of the space, if we go to like one of my favorite frames of the world, which is David R. Hawkins levels of consciousness, he was able to actually yeah. calibrate consciousness on a Hertz scale, beautiful body of work. Most of the space are in those lower levels of resentment, fear, anger, and that's how they're going about their processes. Right. And, and what I try to always do and by no means are, Am I perfect? And by no means will any of us ever be perfect. But what I do my best to do and what I would like to be remembered for is there there is a way you can approach all of this from love. Oh, you yes. can both acknowledge the truth of how the Federal Reserve was created. You can acknowledge this elaborate, like we can go super deep tying in the media and how Rockefeller started the education system and how he funded the, the medical system. And, we can we can tie everything together and that can just make you so angry yeah. or you can tie all of that together and still return to love and realize this is your own shadow work. There's no protesting out there that you need to do. Right. There's parts of yourself that you need to integrate. Yes. So good, man. I, I love that uh, analogy you're drawing because we can see that if we fight the system, we're, we're fighting it as the false self they created for us, right? Mm-hmm. So the real way to overthrow the system is to transcend it, to just say, oh, I'm not that person you made up. I am a man named Aaron Scott of the House of Abke or however you want to present yourself. And so none of your laws apply to me. I don't think we have a business contract, do we? All your business contracts are with the false self. And that's exactly what I teach in terms of transcending ego is you have to know who you are as the Christ, the eternal spirit, the presence in dwelling in the body, not the body itself. The body Mm. is like the legal fiction for the ego. Yeah. If it makes you think you're the body, then you did all those bad things in the past. You're guilty for those past things because the body did it and you're the body. And so we do this shadow work to revisit those past things and correct them with the right perception of, no, I am love. I am pure spirit. I'm eternal. And that's what we're doing when we correct our status Uh, legally or lawfully as well. We're basically going back and correcting the record. I wasn't that fictional self who did those things, who got into those contracts. I am a man, a sovereign being. And so here's what's uh, really amazing in terms of the empowerment aspect of this to me is that going back to what we said about how only people have value because only people are real. A corporation can't actually sign a contract with anyone. I think that this thread, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off. I think that this thread that you're speaking on is one of the deepest and most profound ones. I had to sit with this one for weeks before it was really like when you can really understand, like it's easy to just say money doesn't exist. People are the only value. It's like, okay, I see that. But no, 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 no. This is like really deep. This is really deep. So let's try to, let's try to really sink this in. So only people have value because only 
only people really exist, a man or a woman. A, a, a business, a corporation can't sign a contract with anyone because they're not a person who can sign something. They don't exist. It's a fiction. So they have to, they have, to have people to, hiding behind these corporate veils and signing the contracts, right? Posing as a business. So what, what the Federal Reserve did is say, we're going to make all these people our assets by making a fake corporation out of them. We'll trick them into signing that they are that corporation. And then we own every cent of value that person will ever create in their life. So every job you'll ever have, every loan you'll ever take out, every business contract you'll ever get into, every cent that will go through you, they say now belongs to us because we own you. So every person is assigned at birth, every man or woman is assigned a certain dollar value by the Federal Reserve. And some people say it's like 17 million. Other people say, no, it's like 100 million. Right. We don't know for sure, but we know it's a lot of money because people write off millions of dollars of debt with their birth certificate once they figure this out. And it's like infinite supply of money. So you from birth are assigned a dollar value in a state, so to speak, mm -hmm. that the Federal Reserve says is ours. And they don't tell you about it. So then they make a trust. They set up a trust out of the government corporation. There, there is no government. It's just a business called the United States. Mm -hmm. the, that's the, the grantor of the trust, the creditor. And then the legal fiction of your all capitals names, they make that the trustee. And then they make themselves the beneficiary of that estate. And this is called the sesquivir or sestike depending how you want to right. pronounce it. But yes, so this is the the trust that you never knew existed. <laughs> yeah, you never have a clue this exists. They give you a social security number, which is literally your Dun & Bradstreet number. Yeah, that's your EIN in number. commerce. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you think it's, oh, it's my identification as a, as a citizen. Well, sort of, but it's also really a business number. And so everything you sign, driver's license, social security, marriage certificate, mortgage, you're always saying, yes, 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 I'm that legal fiction, all capitals names. That's literally an account being held at the Federal Reserve Bank in San Francisco or something. And so then every time you take out a loan, this is the mind blowing part, banks don't have any money because there's actually no such thing as a bank. You know, when you, when you hear the word bank, what do you think of? Oh, a place that holds money for people. That's not what a bank is. That's mm -hmm. what they pretend to be. What a bank is, is a fake business that, that creates money out of thin air by loaning money that doesn't exist. So you say, hey, I want to buy a house, $100,000 loan. The bank says, no problem. They call up the Federal Reserve and say, hey, we need a $100,000 to be taken out of you know, all capitals, Aaron Scott Abke's social security account. So the feds write the money out of thin air, give it to the bank. The bank gives it to you. So they just loaned you your own money from your own estate that you don't know exists. And then they say, now you have to pay us back for this loan over the next 25 years or whatever the mortgage is. And you're actually, you're actually going to pay us back with interest. So you're going to pay us back your own money. And then sometimes up to four or five X. We call that triple dipping. <laughs> right. Triple dipping you, man. And you're none the wiser for any of this mm -hmm. because you don't know who you really are, right? So when people figure this out, what they do is you, you correct your status on the public record through some kind of affidavit, declaration of status. You say, I am a man named Aaron Scott. Uh, apparently, there's no last names in common law. It's the house name you were given. Question uh, for you on that. Go for it. Would you consider something like a revocation of election status correction? Or would you consider that different? It's definitely a record of status. Um, I don't know if it's enough to like really hold up in court, but um, I've I've submitted a revocation of election because again, taxes are voluntary. So they, they opt you in when you say that you're that legal fiction business they made out of your name. But Aaron, so, you're going to go to jail for tax evasion. <laughs> if you say you're the business, you better believe <laughs> yeah. you are. You know, a man or a woman can't be imprisoned for a business contract. Only All crimes are commercial, guys. That's one of the most important things you can understand. If all crimes are commercial, whatever it is you think you would get in trouble for, that's not you. So yes. the people that go to jail for these things, that tells me they seriously lack financial literacy. And they're also trusting the enemy who works for the bar. <laughs> 
we could get into that. But you're just you're asking your you're asking your oppressor for freedom advice. That's the way I explain it to our students. That's a good way of saying never it. do that. But then we go, oh, I need an attorney because I don't know what I'm doing. Right. In in common law, there's no such thing as a crime where there's no injured party. Mm-hmm. So you injured. get a speeding ticket, for example, and you just say, oh, who's the injured party in this crime? You're saying I committed a crime. Who's the injured party? And let's say uh, the state of Texas was injured by you speeding. Oh, really? Can the state of Texas show up to this court case, please? And tell me how I injured the Mr. State of Texas. No, they can't because it doesn't exist. It's a legal fiction. So it's actually a business contract. It's it's an offer for a, a bill to pay. It's exactly what it is. It's an offer. It. They're offering, would you like to pay me fraudulently? <laughs> for a law that doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, like, so, so getting back to the declaration of status. So you mm-hmm. can do revocation of election, um, a declaration of status affidavit, where you just say, I am a man. Um, I was... I was unknowingly uh, made into a fake uh, corporation at birth, social security number, blah, 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 being held at this Federal Reserve Bank. And I am now taking status of as the executor of that trust. I am the executor of that estate now, not the trustee. I'm the, I'm the executor and the beneficiary. So all the money that's attached to this all capitals name belongs to me now. Who is going to come into this court and rebut my claim? Does anyone have evidence to the contrary? Who's the claimant saying that I am not a man who owns this estate? And guess what? Nobody's going to show up and say, no, I own that estate because a government doesn't exist. The United States corporation can't show up and and contest you. No one's even going to try to contest you because they're going to admit and show the cats out of the bag that this is a rigged system. So if you know who you really are and you declare your status, you can take back that trust and say, no, the Federal Reserve is no longer the beneficiary of my estate. I'm the beneficiary. And who's going to protest me? Nobody, because it's all fake. And so from that point on, and it's it's a little more complex than this with the legalese, but you, if you have debt you owe to a bank, remember, it's all money out of your estate that they took from your estate and loaned to you. So people are now going into court and discharging, and that's a key term, not not paying, but discharging all of their debts through their birth certificate by saying, yeah, take it out of my estate, no problem. And because it's all just business, the courts just want to get paid, the banks just want to get paid, nobody really cares what's right or what's true, they just want money. So you're just doing business at that point saying, this is my estate, sure, take it out of my estate. It's mind-blowing. That is mind-blowing. So there's a, there's a few different threads that I want to go a little bit deeper on that, that I kind of noted down as you were talking super deep. So excellent explanation, by the way, you, you really know this stuff. So I'm stoked for your audience to hear, to hear this (laughs) from you as an intro. So you're, you were bringing up this concept of banks, right? And what came to mind is this, this notion of, I think it's really important for, for the audience to understand So you're talking about, we have this birth certificate, we have a sesquivy that started from basically from birth and they, this is traded on the publicly traded markets, just so you guys understand. And so let's, yeah, that's a serious rabbit trail. And I've posted a website before where you can look up all the entities leeching off of you. That's a whole other thing. Cause when I was talking about triple dipping, have you seen this website? I have. Yeah. (laughs) So when we want to talk about double, triple, quadruple dipping, whatever. So these entities will leech off of your social, get what they would like, and then resell it sometimes for yeah. two, three, four. And that just is like a continuation. So we just have no concept of like the amount of debt out there, like what, how this actually plays out. But I don't think that that part's important. Can I interrupt one thing there? Yeah. It, what you're saying is this simple. If you had a hundred million dollars in your floorboards of your house and you had no clue it was there and all your neighbors knew it was there and they knew you didn't know it was there, what do you think is going to happen? Somebody's going to sneak into your house and take your money and go sell it on the stock market and trade with it. Like that's all that's happened to your estate, really. Yeah, that is all that's happened. Nobody exists and they do. Mm-hmm. So this thing has been growing because it has been on the market. It's like an investable equity, if you yes. will. And at the same time, it's being leached off of the same way that people refi their houses, if you want to think of it in that way. So equity grows, but then it's being leached off of. I want to make sure to touch on the spiritual connotations here because like you're laying an excellent 
like general common law foundation. And then I'm seeing all the the etymology things pop up that I think is super cool. And especially if you're at all spiritually inclined, it's going to click for you right away. So when you understand that all debt and all credit, no, all credit comes from your social, all credit comes from your birth certificate, Right. right? And, and Aaron laid that out beautifully, how it's coming from your sesquivy. So let's try to follow along. So there's a sesquivy with a ridiculous amount of value tied to it. Anytime you've ever been lent something, leased something, financed something, or even signed something contractually, that entering of your social security number, either writing or typing it into the contract, and that signing of your wet ink signature or now digital signature, Those are the two things that actually created the value in that transaction. And that is where it starts to get even deeper spiritually. So if we look at the corp at the etymology of the word corporation, Mm -hmm. and by the way, guys, there's a free etymology dictionary. You should have the app on your phone. (laughs) It's a game changer for just day to day. And then you can also just go to, I think it's like Eddie online or something, but just look up etymology dictionary. You'll see. So if you look up the etymology of corporation, you'll see that it comes from two root words. If you're not already following corp and oration, corp is coming from corpse, corpse, dead oration. If you think of like a great orator is speech or speaking. So a corporation is dead speak. A corporation is a dead entity. So let's go a little bit deeper because this is where it ties into the spirituality. Aaron's been touching on repeatedly, so I want to make sure this doesn't get glanced over. They have no life without us. He didn't say it like that, but that's what I'm getting to. This notion of people are all there is in terms of value. Money's not real. Corporations you now know are dead. So I want you to think of corporations as zombies, the walking dead. And what do they need to feed on? Mm-hmm. You got it. They need lifeblood. And what is lifeblood? Credit. Yeah. And who has the credit? Only people have credit. And so this is where it comes full circle to an understanding. Banks need you. They can't survive without leeching your life force. What is yeah. your life force? Well, you could say prana or semen, <laughs> but that's not today's conversation. Yeah. Your life force <laughs> in this context is credit. Credit is life when you start to learn it. Debt is death. Credit is life. Hopefully that's not too complicated. Simple. So this was mind blowing for me when I really, that's what I mean. When I came, I came from the spiritual perspective when I started diving deeper into this stuff. And when that, when these things really clicked for me, it's like, okay, that is, that is how all of this is working. We're granting we're basically being harvested. It's exactly like the scene in the matrix where you're popping the thing out of the back of your head or like the walking dead or whatever it may be. There's a lot of movies about it, but humans labor and, but it's deeper than their labor because what allows them to have labor or to practice labor is their life force. So we're literally being harvested. Our life force is being harvested and it's done through all really sleight of hand and mastery and manipulation of words. So that's why I'm always bringing things back to the words because there's really no point in diving deep in trying to understand any semblance of common law, contract law, consumer law, UCC. If you don't have the base of the words, because you're going to read sentences and you're going to be like, Oh, okay. I get it, but but you don't know what those mean. You have to assume that what you're reading is Mandarin and you have to break down each word at a deeper level. So I just wanted to make sure to touch on that because there's this notion of when, when you can really understand how that part works, you understand, like Aaron said multiple times, understanding who the fuck you are, or I think he just says who you are, but the way I always say it is who the fuck are you? Cause it's, it's deep and, and you, This brings us back to our God-given birthrights, and it brings us back to that powerful creator energy of realizing, like, you're not being oppressed by the banks. You're not a victim. Yeah. Like, there's such powerful connotations here of taking your power back when you realize, like, you're the original creditor. You're 
the creator here, right? Co-creating with God, and you're the one with all the credit and all the life force. And it all comes back to words if you if you want to understand that. And as we say, understand that, because even the word understanding, what we're talking about words, means standing under. So when you get pulled over by a policy enforcer slash debt collector that most people refer to as a police officer, and they roll, you, they have you roll your window down and they say, blah, blah, blah. Do you understand? And you're scared. And you say, yes, officer, you just said, I stand under you. That was a verbal contract that you, you just, opening. you just not only gave them authority over you, but basically with in so many words without needing to say it said, I'm a statutory U S citizen and I'm under your jurisdiction. Please rule over me. Right. And that isn't how it works. Cause when you, when you're dealing with natural laws and when you even from a spiritual perspective without law, one of the primary teachings of spirituality is that there is no such thing as hierarchy. No one is better than anyone else. Right. So there's a disconnect when you're a spiritual being and you're operating in a system where you're answering to another man. And it's true with the, this entire concept of authority. Yeah. It's all the same thing, man. It's all the same thing. Your soul is no lower than any other soul. So why are you answering to another soul? Why are you buying into this notion that, oh, well, they went to school and they got this graduate degree and they've campaigned for 15 years and now they're on the Senate. So they know best. It's like, (laughs) they know best. Yeah. How do you know that they know best? Even, even the driver's license thing you mentioned of getting pulled over, why do you think they want you to have a card with an all capitals names on it? Because they have to constantly trick you into giving your power away because only you have power as a real man or a woman, a sovereign divine being. A corporation doesn't have power. A title doesn't have power. So when the police officer says license and registration, they're saying, before I can even interact with you, I need you to consent that you are the fake legal fiction name. And then I can imprison that name, find that name, give you a speeding ticket, do whatever I want because I have authority over you. So by handing them a card, you're saying, yes, I am this fake legal fiction and you do have authority over me. Now, of course, you're none the wiser to that, but that's how they get you. It's through deception and manipulation because that's the only way to, to get your power, right? This is why this is why everyone says it's a satanic system, a Luciferian system. They say, oh, the world's, it's all Satanism. And you go, oh, these kooky, like, you know, conspiracy theorists. Well, what, they're, what we're actually saying whenever you hear that term, Satanism, is that it's, it's, a, it's a philosophical claim, not a metaphysical claim, really. We're saying that Lucifer is, archetypally speaking, is the antithesis to God, right? God is love. Satan is fear. So only God can give free will. And Satan, being the inverse of God, seeks to do the opposite, right? Satan is that which seeks to take free will. But Satan can only take free will freely. It has to be under consent of some kind. So that's why Lucifer is called what? The great deceiver, right? Even in the Bible. So Lucifer does that takes your free will through lies, confusion, fear, deception, manipulation. It has to play tricks on you, right? To get you to give your free will to Satan, to the system. So Lucifer sort of has to tell you everything that he's doing to you because it needs to be freely given free will. But Lucifer tricks you into not seeing the full picture of what Lucifer's doing to you. So Satanism as a term just means the inversion of truth. That's all it means. That's why the church of Satan has upside down um, star of David, upside down crosses. It's, It's showing you what their principle is based on, which is the inversion of truth, right? So that's what it means when you hear that the systems of the world are satanic. It means that every world power, every government runs on this philosophy of inverting truth through deception and fear and manipulation. So that's why we say they have no actual power. They just have the illusion of power because we're ignorant to the games that they're playing and we keep giving them what they need to survive. And so that's why in the Bible, God says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge, this not for a lack of power quotes. or life, but knowledge is why we perish. Hosea 4, 6. I love that one. 